All right, welcome. So in this video, we are going to talk through analysis of the data we collected in the titration lab. And so our goal here is to be familiar with the shapes of these various titration curves and to understand why they have the shapes that they do and think about what species are present in the solution at each point in the curve. And that will help explain why these graphs have the shape that they do. So let's first take a look at titration of a strong acid with a strong base. So first step to understanding what's going on here in the curve is to figure out what this reaction is that's happening. So let's start out with the molecular equation. So we've got HCl and NaOH, and this looks a little bit like a you know double displacement style reaction. We make NaCl, that's table salt, and H2O. And then if we label the states of matter, and keep in mind our rules to, when we figure out the net ionic equation, we ionize our aqueous strong acids and aqueous ionic compounds. And when we do that, uh, we will notice that in our net ionic equation, we are left with this. And so if we want to review how to do these, we want to take a look back at page 12, um, these, you know, acid base you know, reaction notes. So go back and review that page if you are not feeling confident with how to write out these equations. There's some videos there as well. So now let's take a look at what we call the equivalence point. So the equivalence point is where all the reactants um, are used up. So where all of our reactants have reacted and we are left with pure product. And in terms of like looking at this graph where we hit the equivalence point, if you see how there's this vertical region in this graph, like it's kind of flat and then there's this part where it's really steep and then it's flat again. So this right here, this vertical region has to do with the equivalence point. And the, to find the pH of equivalence, we look about the halfway point in this vertical region. So in this case, it looks like the pH is right between six and eight. So it looks like the pH is seven at equivalence. So this solution is neutral at equivalence, which makes sense because the product of this reaction is water. So I would expect it to be neutral. Okay, and then let's take a look at what, um, what species are present in the solution at various points. So initially, before we add anything, we've got pure um, HCl, right? So we've got H plus ions and Cl minus ions floating around in the solution. At the equivalence point, we've got pure products, we've got water and then we also have some sodium and chloride ions floating around and before we reach the end point of our reaction here the equivalence point over here this is the region where we have excess acid that's why the ph stays really low is because we have excess acid and then when all our acid gets used up that's where the equivalence point and as soon as our acid gets used up and we continue to add sodium hydroxide and I'm um, in this region of the curve, now we'll keep adding, you know, sodium hydroxide. There's nothing for it to react with. So what we have here is some excess sodium hydroxide. That's why the pH here is so high. So here's the region of excess acid. Here's the region of excess base. Your equivalence point is where they're exactly um, reacted and everything's all used up. All right, so now let's look at another acid titration, but this time it's a titration of a weak acid. And so first we're gonna start by looking at the equation for the reaction that occurs. So we've got a weak acid, which is HC2H3O2. This is called acetic acid. And this is the acid that is found in vinegar. And again, we do a little double displacement action here and we end up making sodium acetate and water. Okay, and then these are all aqueous and then my water is a liquid. And then keep in mind, I'm gonna write a little note off to the side. I'm gonna show the complete ionic version here, just as a little refresher. Again, we go over this on page 12 here, but uh, since acetic acid is a weak acid, it will not ionize. So it stays as HC, the, 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 the. it stays like that, HC2H3O2. It stays in its molecular form. Um, sodium hydroxide, it's an ionic compound. So it's going to ionize there. Sodium acetate is also an ionic compound. So it's going to ionize. And then water is a liquid. It does not ionize. So you end up with just one spectator. That's your sodium ion. 
So your net ionic equation is your acetic acid molecule reacting with the hydroxide ion to form the acetate ion and liquid water. Okay, so this is acetic acid. This right here is acetate. And we know that if we remove a hydrogen from an acid, we end up with the conjugate base. So the product of this reaction is going to be a base. So we expect to see the pH will be um, basic at the equivalence point. And let's go over to our graph and kind of confirm this. So here we go. So this titration also has a vertical region. That's something that all our titration curves will have in common. You might notice that this vertical region is not as large or as steep as it is in a strong acid. So that's something you want to keep an eye out for. Vertical region will be a little bit shorter. And then if we look at the halfway point, that's the equivalence point here. It looks like the pH at equivalence is around 8. Okay, so the pH is around 8. So it is in, indeed basic. That's one of the things that will make your weak acid curve different from your strong acid. Your weak acid is going to be a base at equivalence. That's because the product of this reaction is the conjugate base of that acid there. And the again, if we look back at page 12, um, we find that the conjugate of a weak acid is a weak base. That's why this one is a base at equivalence. The conjugate of a strong acid is neutral. So this solution is uh, neutral here. Okay, and if we look at what's going on here, um, initially we've got pure um, weak acid. At our equivalence point, we have pure um, conjugate base, right? So we've got this acetate ion present. Okay, so over here we've got acetic acid. Uh, at equivalence, we've got conjugate base. Over here, beyond equivalence, what we have is we have excess um, sodium hydroxide. That's why the pH gets so high here at the end. And then right here in the middle, um, what we have here is as this reaction is proceeding, we are using up some acetic acid and making, so we're using up reactants and making product. So in this region, we've got, you know, excess um, weak acid. Um, but we also, as this reaction occurs, we will um, end up with a mixture of the weak acid. There we go. Um, and the product of this reaction, which is the conjugate base. So we will find that when you have a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base, we call this a buffer. And that we'll talk about in a different um, lesson there. But that's an important thing along this point. We have a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base. So we call this the buffer region. Okay, now let's look at the titration of a weak base. Uh, here we go. Our molecular equation is we've got um, you know, NH3 plus HCl. These ones can kind of look a little bit like just like a combination reaction almost. So this is the net ionic version. It looks like this. Again, look back at page 12 for a refresher um, on how to write these. There's a video there as well. And if we look at equivalence, in this time we're starting with a weak base, and the conjugate of a weak base is a weak acid. So this is the conjugate acid of our um, yeah of our weak base. So at equivalence, we expect to see that it's, it's an acid. So let's go and confirm it. So let's look at the vertical region. Again, all of our titration curves have this kind of sudden drop there. And it looks like the midway point, I'm going to say, is around maybe around 5-ish. So the pH is acidic at equivalence. And the reason why is at equivalence, we've got, you know, pure um, NH4. Whoops, so we have made the conjugate um, weak acid here. Initially, we've got NH3. That's why it's a base. And then over here, when we get beyond the equivalence point, now we're just keeping adding strong acids. So that's why the pH drops so low is because at this point we've added excess hydrochloric acid. So now the pH is just going to become similar to hydrochloric acid. Um, and again, just like we saw up here when we were titrating a weak acid, a similar thing happens when we're titrating a weak base. In this area right here, before you reach the equivalence point, you're going to end up with a combination of, you're going to have some excess NH3 that hasn't been used up 
and you will also have made some NH4. So you're going to end up with a weak acid and conjugate base pair. So remember this weak conjugate acid base pair, we call that a buffer. So we have made a buffer there. Cool. And then I'm just going to briefly talk about this one. If you have a, um, a diprotic acid, so this is an example of maleic acid is a diprotic acid. So we can use the generic formula H2A to show that it has um, two hydrogens to, to give off. And what happens here is there's actually two reactions that happen. So first, um, this H2A, this diprotic acid, first it's going to react with hydroxide and lose its first hydrogen. So initially what happens over here, we've got pure diprotic acid. And over here at that first equivalence point, all of our initial acid has turned into the HA minus version. Okay, so this is the conjugate base of this acid. Uh, but this substance is maybe one of our amphoteric substances. It can also, it has another hydrogen it can lose. So it's going to actually lose a second hydrogen. So now it's going to become A2 minus. So that's what's happening right here at the second equivalence point. We've lost a second hydrogen. So for each hydrogen that can be like neutralized, we're going to see a vertical region. So the first equivalence point has to do with losing that first hydrogen. That second equivalence point corresponds to losing that second hydrogen. You can also have a similar thing happening with a base. So what happens here, um, in this case, we're titrating um, the carbonate ion, which you can think of as a weak base. I should clarify this is also weak here. Okay. Uh, so this is a weak base, and since this has a negative 2 charge, this is actually capable of grabbing two hydrogens. So this first, you notice how there's two bumps on this curve. So initially, we start with pure carbonate ion, and then at this first equivalence point, all of our carbonate ion has turned into hydrogen carbonate. And hydrogen carbonate is also a base, so it can take a second hydrogen, and form H2CO3. So there we go. So at our second equivalence point, we've got all H2CO3. And then over here, we've got excess um, HCl being added. So what we'll notice is that um, you will see, a, again, a vertical region, a bump for every neutralization that happens here. So for every hydrogen kind of gained or lost. So this is a summary of these titration curves. We have other titration videos and readings that will go into it in more detail, but hopefully this is a good starting point. Let me know if you have further questions.